let's look at uh, mosquitoes themselves and try to understand how difficult uh, it will be or it is to go from climate related uh, changes in parameters environmental parameters like temperature relative humidity precipitation and um, wind and then see how uh, the bringing that to pathogens and disease outcomes will be really complicated. So starting with malaria again, for malaria transmission to be successful, a female Anopheles must survive long enough after becoming, becoming infected. So taking initial blood meal from a host that is already carrying malaria to allow the parasites to complete the extrinsic growth cycle uh, to mature and become transmittable and resume the mating and blood seeking cycle. So imagine the details there. <clears throat> okay, it's a female anophilus that, uh, anophilus, I hope I'm saying it, that must do this. Um, and climate can be used as an indicator of uh, potential outbreaks because climate variability affects the speed of mosquito and parasite prolifer proliferation. So here you are jumping all these steps and just looking for empirical relations between climatic parameters and mosquito and parasite proliferation and of often it depends uh, on how the mosquito population itself may have uh, been estimated versus uh, how the disease outcome may have been used as an indicator of uh, mosquito proliferation or malaria uh, outcome, right? So these kinds of things depend on uh, understanding the basic mosquito ecology and this paper lists a few things that are not well understood in that sense. Uh, inadequate estimates for life history traits and how they vary geographically obviously it depends on the mosquito uh, species and uh, its uh, reliance on a, a, a habitat. It could be shady vegetated moist regions or it could be standing waters in urban settings and so on. We will see that a little bit more. Inadequate tools for age grading mosquitoes and tracking movement in the field. So some birds, for example, are uh, planted with GPS and they can be tracked and the same is done for uh, many animals which carry uh, pathogens, but for mosquitoes that's not so easy. They can hitch a ride in an airplane uh, all the way across the world, for example. Inadequate documentation of genetic diversity of mosquito populations. Lack of understanding of geographic variation in transmission potential. We'll see in the case of uh, um, Anopheles there is a difference lack of understanding of the role of insecticide resistance on ability of mosquitoes to transmit pathogens. We already have uh, uh, drug resistant malaria uh, going around for example. Uh, lack of understanding of the role of human movement in dissemination of new viruses. So it's not just uh, mosquito, it's the interaction between blood uh, feeding of mosquitoes on humans who are infected and then transmitting it to somebody else while allowing the <coughs> ecology of the pathogen to take place within the host. Uh, lack of understanding of the role of human movement, uh, okay, that I said. Lack of understanding of mosquito biting behavior in relation to environmental and temporal context. So diurnal cycle will matter because not all mosquitoes bite during the day. Uh, those that bite during the day avoid sunlight and wind, so they bite you in the shade but there are some that will bite you at dawn and dusk or at night so you have to worry about all these sorts of things and ignoring the uh, diurnal cycle can be an issue uh, as well. Here is a way to think about this complex interaction of climate and uh, vectors. For example here global disease transmission is what we are worried about so if you think about interactions uh, with the biotic environment, climate, water storage, urbanization and land use. Right? They mm, are very important for mosquito populations. Interactions with the biotic environment, competitors, host availability and human movement. Geographic variation in transmission potential, vector competence, so how capable it is of uh, moving the pathogen across, resistance to insecticides, life history and host preference. Then you have anthropology, transmission capacity, 
abundance and distribution, which all together will determine the global disease transmission. So you can see that almost all of these are affected by weather and climate. Okay, which is our focus here, of course. So here is, uh, to give you an idea, this is the distribution of Anopheles mosquitoes uh, uh, as malaria vectors. There are many species, as you can see, uh, Americas, Euros, uh, Europe and Middle East, Africa, India, Western Asia, uh, Southeast Asia and the Pacific, and these are the different species. So obviously there is a huge genetic mix of Anopheles and we are more specifically interested in all these characters of um, transmission capacity, abundance, uh, distribution, and genetic factors, and how each species will respond to climate change, and how climate change is uh, manifest in the basic parameters of temperature, relative humidity, wind, and precipitation, and of course uh, vegetation and uh, population uh, uh, across these regions. Okay, very, very complicated, which is why we need uh, planetary health, okay? Nonetheless, people do what is called habitat suitability models. So here it is for Aedes aegypti and albopictus uh, showing distributions. Uh, various empirical relations are used here to make the habitat models. So you can see that habitat suitability uh, in these green colors, the uh, regions are not suitable either for Aedes aegypti or Albopictus um, and some of the others are suitable for both or just one of them. Again, a complex combination of uh, the other type of mosquito which we will look at for dengue for example. Okay. Um, here is the disease risk for Zika, dengue, yellow fever, chikungunya and Rift Valley fever. So you can now combine the uh, environmental factors, mosquito habitat suitability, uh, demographics, and so on. But you have to start with looking at the occurrence uh, by whatever methods you can get the data, and then somehow compute risk factors, right? Because remember, risk is vulnerability, exposure, and hazard. Uh, in this case, of course, it's the factors of vectors, pathogens, susceptible population and people movement and environmental factors, ecological factors, social, political factors, and so on, all together are going to determine the risks. Why do you do this? Um, sorry about that. Okay, so that's just a brief expose on the complexities of mosquito life cycle itself and its interaction with climate and humans and in the environment and ecology and we will get back to dengue now to look at how um, dengue is potentially going to be affected by climate again just to uh, warn you again emphasize that we are less looking for all the factors that will matter when we actually want to um, either map the risks or create early warning systems and uh, make plans for disease preparedness of these vector-borne and zoonotic diseases and just uh, not going end-to-end -end in any of these cases. Okay, Associated with each one of them there are of course uh, adaptation and mitigation factors which we will come back to later on.